so we made it to Mansfield uh, safely yesterday afternoon. Um, bit of an adventurous day with the uh, Bellini uh, losing a sump plug and uh, then straight after that, that V-Storm had that same electrical problem again after we thought it had all been fixed. But it's the next morning now and uh, it be a wet one. With Victoria, right? So raining now. Might even get some snow this afternoon. Just it's uh, we head to Phillip Island. It'll be fun crossing the bridge at San Remo, and uh, it's going to be a wet weekend. But uh, we've got a house, and it's all sorted. So talk to you from the helmet. So good morning big bikers, this is uh, start of day two on the bikes, so we're at Mansfield, got in last night, no problems apart from that Benelli which is over there and he's riding with us today, after having that little issue and he ended up going riding with the road guys just to stay somewhere where he could uh, get help if needed, but it wasn't required. The ag agricultural piping plug, <laughs> Aggie pipe, is still in his, uh, <laughs> it's still his sump, oh, his sump plug, his uh, oil filler. Had a little bit of rain last night, or just actually this morning, but just checking the radar, it's actually moved and uh, not going to be bothering us anymore. There's another one coming, but that won't get here till later this afternoon and we won't be here, so. Decided to go without wets. Hoping that the, uh, and the rain has settled the dust just a little bit. I think the first thing we need to do though is get some coffee. That's what we're doing, so. Kemi Moto gloves are going okay. Alright, <laughs> so I got given a sticker last night, just 25 years these guys have been doing that, 25th MotoGP run. It's a bit of an honour to participate on this auspicious occasion. I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be my backpack. <laughs> right. The only Af Africa twin here. The only Africa twin. The whole ride, actually. A lot of tigers and GSAs. GSAs aren't going the. <laughs> not going the dirt though. Don't want to get dirty. It's its own quarter to eight. nice just being able to get on a bike and ride and not have to worry about any of the planning or anything, so it's good. It's 22 degrees. Oh, good to be moving though, it's just getting a bit, uh, a bit hot. Alright, so heading out of town, heading out of Mansfield, got no idea where we're going, kind of heading west. So obviously going to link up some dirt and then we should be going south. So that's where Phillip Island is, but uh, ADV riders, right? No such thing as a straight line. It's all lob cuts.
Tages. Remember, I've got nobbies on. <laughs> well, we all do. It's a bit of weather. Uh, hopefully, we won't be heading into that. So we can hit the dirt. And hopefully, it's uh, not so dusty. Skippy running down the road. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Friend straight across in front of him. It's such a nice track. They're climbing up the side of a hill. bit of road. We had that funny thing happen yesterday where uh, my bag came off and it, it all stemmed back to the morning where I had, um, uh, I was actually clipping it in and, and uh, Scott who I was staying with commented on something, I went and talked to him about it and just completely got sidetracked and uh, didn't get back to securing my bag and it wasn't until we were coming down a really rocky bit of road yesterday that it actually bounced off. So it did quite well staying on there the whole day. Uh, I felt it go fortunately so it wasn't going that fast and everything inside was fine and there was no damage to the outside of the bag so when fitted properly <laughs> the Moscow Moto stuff is pretty strong and yet another reason why soft bags are uh, such a better idea for off-roading in fact there was always been telling some stories last night about fellas that had broken their legs on Hard bags. Uh, it's really nice country in here. Oh, cool. How good's that? Wouldn't want about 10 mils of rain on it though. Oh, a couple of mil would be nice, it was still a bit dusty. So we went up to about 700 metres on this ridge, and we're just kind of running over the other side of it now. There's so many good roads down here. Just the countryside is spectacular, I can't wait to come and explore some of this area. Forestry by the look of it. I mean, it looks very grey and bleak, but it's 23 degrees. It's very pleasant riding temperature. Yeah, I'm going to need to clean those pre filters again. <laughs> Jeez, 
oncoming cars. Look out. Look out. How good's that? This is Lake Eildon. Eildon? Yeah. Okay. So that's Bonnie Doon, the bridge we crossed. Bonnie Doon, where we crossed the bridge. Oh, okay. And then we turned off. The start of that little road, that's where the house was in the movie. Oh, right, okay, Bonnie, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been to the other one at Essendon. Yeah, Lake Eildon, he was saying, and where we crossed over the bridge and turned left, that was a place called Bonnie Doon. Now, if you've seen the movie The Castle, you'll know that Bonnie Doon's where uh, the family, oh, what's their name, had a house at Bonnie Doon. And, uh, yeah, quite... Um, funny movie. I've actually been to their house which backs onto the Essendon Airport. But, uh, I think that recently sold actually for some development there so it might not be there much longer if it is still at all. I'm sure there's some fellas from Victoria that'd be able to enlighten me. But uh, for all you fellas that, all you Victorians that are uh, watching me ride around your roads I'm very impressed I do like the high country I've been wanting to come here for many years that uh, generally when we do a, a group ride it's kind of group consensus on where we go we have been absolutely loving the uh, the desert and it's been awesome uh, because uh, um, you know we've had some great times out there but uh, generally trying to find the right time to come down to Victoria has been the problem for us normally because we head out to the desert in in the winter we obviously can't come down here and go motorbike riding in the winter or I don't know some of you crazy buggers do um, so you know it's just about availability the guys that actually have to take holidays you know from their jobs so um, you know, we've normally ended up around, you know, the latter part of the year. But we did talk about it several times about coming down here and just spending some time exploring. But uh, it's probably not going to happen with the group that's been out to the desert the last few times. So it, uh, it's not going to stop Big Bike Adventures from coming down and checking it out. And I'll be talking about that in a, later in the year. i have a big reveal about the plans for 2020 and beyond for BBA. So... Uh, some of some of you guys that are on this trip already know. <laughs> Can't keep a big mouth shut. Anyway, it's, it's uh, going to be fun, and it's going to mean I'll be spending a bit of time down here exploring this road. And uh, if there's anyone wants to play tour guide, that'd be awesome. I'd love for you to show me around. We're, we're up in uh, Lake Eildon National Park. So, the lake's just down there, you can't see it through the trees, maybe you can, I don't know, but they were at the lookout there where we stopped, so Lake Yildon, so we're, we're kind of, by the looks of it, on the western side of it, of the range. We're on the western side, some of you probably even know this road, I can't see it anywhere on my mapping at the moment. It is beautiful, beautiful country. It's so green. Have I mentioned how green it is? <laughs> P 
he's doing a great job out the front. Here, I think. Gus Chinnicks, look out. Oh, look how empty that dam is. There you go. Empty Lake Yildon. level as the lake I think we yeah. I mean it looks green and lush and fantastic it does but you can tell how dry it is by the level of the lake so you know there's uh, quite a lot of uh, significant water management needs to be going on over the next few years in Australia to make sure that the whole place doesn't go bone dry ah, I wonder where they were going enjoying the ride so much forgot about coffee <laughs> but it's coffee time what are you doing Timmy leaving uh, our coffee slash breakfast so this is going down over Lake Yildin temperatures probably about 24 degrees it looks bleak and cool, but it's not. It's really, really pleasant riding conditions. The bikes are all lined up behind. We're finally starting our drive south down towards the island. I, again, I'm not sure of the route. That's looking a bit dark. I'm suggesting we're going to get a bit wet. If that happens, I'll put the uh, put this camera away. Uh, everything else is pretty much set up for the weather. But, uh, anyway, we'll wait until it starts to rain before I do anything. Because I mean, it looks quite bleak, but I've basically had little or no water on us this trip and I don't want to say that too soon because the forecast for Phillip Island is actually pelting rain for the next three days so it might be a wet race which would be good for Jack Miller uh, Jack Miller at a home crowd Jack's great in the wet so if it's a wet track there's a good chance Jack might get up in front of the home crowd that'd be pretty exciting Zarko's going to be riding a Honda for the first time that's worth going to see so I'm looking forward to that so, and they put up those signs. So, for the locals, we've just turned off onto Snobs Creek Road. So, we're heading up into the mountains again. But by the look of things, it's sealed. There's a, there's a high risk motorcycle area, which generally means that there's lots of twisties. So, let's go that way. Oh, 
Knobs Creek turns into a dirt road. And there's someone been there before us. Quite a bit of dust here already, so. Ah. Quite a bit of lingering dust in front of Peter, so. Just be because there's been little little breeze blowing it away. Everyone's on high alert though. The really really loose surface and the Pete's obviously on high alert. Just check the cars around the corner as he should. But, um, I'm just trying to keep. really really loose and last thing I want to want to be doing is having it spear off near one of these um, steep climbs steep drops down here so I think getting out of control anyway Logging truck. Why is so much dirt? This may not be all that pleasant, actually. <laughs> sort of tyres Tim's running on the back of that 1150 but uh, I don't seem to throw out rocks like when I ride with Chris and Neil the, the motor tractionator just spit rocks everywhere but I'm hardly getting anything off the back of that GS
Sorry? Did you do that? Yeah. I'll get you to do mine as well. <laughs> Hang on, it's stuck in there. <laughs> I've got a bit of a problem with this camera. That was good. I'm just, I'm just going to go up here and fix the camera. Brand new battery in it last night. <laughs> That's slippery. Ooh, yeah, we might just turn it down a bit, eh? <laughs> Don't want to be sliding off the side of this one. Thanks. Stephen, those rocks are slippery. We're not up in the super high country because we're not above the snow line at all here um, but uh, certainly riding through the ranges is, uh, is a nice change than across that barren desolate drought stricken country everywhere else seems to be so this is nice Dust down. I hope I went the right way then. Yeah, there's a bike track here. So I'm following Tim on the 1150, so he's down here somewhere, but there's his bike track. lose altitude we will probably end up uh, getting out of this mist as well because it's, it's almost like high cloud I'll just get back on the right side of the road I think go around these corners through a few intersections was going yeah I got no idea where I am so sort of waited for Peter to come by and uh, I'll just stay at the back well, the front of the back the back of the front it's one thing to be doing that on the gravel but uh, it'll be interesting to see how we go on the black stuff Goes into the big river road. I haven't done that one yet either. Okay. We're not going that way today. Yeah, yeah. Is that you? Is that your oil? I can smell. Okay. Is that is that you leaking oil? I can smell burning oil when I'm behind a bike. I thought it was thought it was a 640. <laughs> <laughs> I burn oil. <laughs> Boxes burn oil. You what? Boxes burn oil. She 
It'll be interesting to see what it's like. Nobby's on the wet, mate. I, mine are shocking. Oh, I, was, I was just taking it easy through there because I've never had those tyres off-road in the wet. They're, they're, the, they're my desert tyres. <laughs> Oh, not too. Oh, the pressures are way too high. I've got the pressures too high for a road because we're doing so much bitumen, you know. Uh, but they are pretty good. Um, I think that spins them out of mine. Yeah. Tiger, 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 11.50, it's a Calix, oh it's a Tenere, I thought it was a Kawasaki but it's a Tenere, that's uh, old Yemi, and then uh, obviously the Kato, alright we're going. Taking it very easy through this. Oh, there's a leaf litter. Wet road and knobbies. Extreme caution. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the Tenere was a, a KLX, so he's going around the outside of me. <laughs> Uh, oh, he's not running knobbies. <laughs> Just on talking about him, he goes around the outside in the wet. Tiptoeing, and I don't care. Beautiful road, though. <laughs> Look at this. Just love the trees. Just being in the forest, it's cool. It's like just down under 20 degrees. So that's nice. to uh, just plod along here and um, keep you updated if anything interesting happens. Just went through this section that uh, there's obviously been quite a lot of trees down. Big fire's gone through here some time ago and uh, it's just dropping these massive branches and stuff and twigs. Not a problem for a car but uh, uh, on a wet road, on a bike with knobbies, wet sticks. It's a bit of an obstacle course. Quite a lot of forest damage. Do you know what? You can see the trees started to recover already. I mean, a lot of the Australian trees actually uh, need fire to propagate. The seeds only open when the fire's gone through, so some of these big eucalypts, it's really good for them. Folks, here's a quick update. 
Uh, it's it's misty. I'm not going to say it's raining. It's it's misty. You can probably just see it. Like uh, I'm, I'm not really getting wet. Uh, you know, I'm speaking too early. I hope, but it hasn't kind of got to the point yet where I'm feeling I need to stop and put my wets on. Although, having said that, we're getting into Warburton now, which is this uh, small little town. I think we're all going to stop and just rejoin. And um, I, I might just put my rain jacket on, just so that I don't get cold, because the temperature's starting to drop. It's dropping down to about 17 degrees. So I'll probably uh, just put my coat on my pants. Oh, I'm not getting wet down there. I can, my legs are unprotected behind the bike. Nice and warm. The front of them's a bit wet, but that's where my boots are. Um, yeah, we're not. We're, you know, we're only kind of a couple of hours away from Phillip Island now, so I'll stop and check the radar and uh, make a, a call based on what the weather is doing. But like I said, it's it's wet, but it's not. You know, like the jacket's wet, but it's not coming through. So anyway. Probably going to uh, have a bit of radio silence for a while because um, oh, yeah, here we are, all stopping to get fuel here. So um, yeah, I might put my wets on. Just looking at that. So here's what's happened. <laughs> it started pouring. So I've got my full wets on. It's not a Tenereos Kawasaki as I thought it was, but it's a Ten Guy, and I have not seen one of those for so long. I first sort of thought it was Quacker KLR or KLX KLR. Um, but, uh, well, they basically are, I suppose, the Ten Guys. So, full wets. I'm about to take my. Uh, this camera off. <coughs> because it's not waterproof. Okay. Okay, that's it over and out, so hopefully we'll see you uh, at Phillip Island. All going well. Is that working? Okay, it's actually stopped raining. Uh, probably enough for me to get the other, get, get this camera back out. I've been running the one in the waterproof housing, so hopefully I can show you some of the stuff that we've been doing. We've been having a, a great time running around the back of these um, country roads. We're nearly, at, I don't know which way they're going, but we've been basically beelining straight for San Remo, but like just through all the back roads and the little country farm roads that join them all together. Boy, just got a little bit ahead of me now, as I just stopped to put the camera on, but they should wait at the next intersection. And uh, we'll catch them up, but... Um, I hope they will. <laughs> yeah, looks like them down there. Anyway, I wanted to put this camera back on because as we go across the San Remo Bridge into Phillip Island, I, I want to, it's kind of the iconic arrival at Phillip Island symbol, you know, riding across the bridge there that joins Phillip Island to the mainland. So we're not that far from that, we're probably only, um, you know, 50, 60 k's. So hopefully I'll have uh, enough battery and uh, card left to do that. Catch these fellas first. I'll come and talk to you when I'm uh, back on the on the back of the other guys. So I don't know whether they've got plans to take us down in through the uh, the motorway 
We have to get on it at some point though I suppose. I can't really see too many other road options but uh, these these uh, these boys are pretty good. They've taken us on some great roads and all generally heading in the right direction. I'll, I'll When I get there I'll put up a map of where we came from Wagga Wagga down. It was great. <laughs> a terrific trip. It's exactly the sort of route that I plan where you do uh, you know, as much dirt as you can, stringing together the the bits you've got to do, the the bits of tar you've got to do. So, Melbourne, Phillip Island. Oh, Vic Paul, me busy down here. <laughs> Well, we made it. We uh, got here to Phillip Island. Uh, it's just after, oh, just on one o'clock. Um, great run down. Had a little trouble, obviously, because the camera uh, on the side of the helmet, because of the rain, I took that off. So uh, when I put it back on, I didn't bother checking the battery because I was in a bit of a hurry, and of course the battery was flat, so it didn't get much more. But uh, came across the bridge, had the GoPro fully charged, so that was good, and uh, able to get some footage of coming across the San Remo Bridge uh, across onto Phillip Island. So, <sighs> just time to settle in. Uh, Got to go do a supply run, grab some uh, food and drinks and all that sort of stuff. But um, we're here, we're here safe. Uh, got wet, uh, got muddy, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're here, and uh, next couple of days it's all about the racing. So it should be good though. If it's wet down here, it'd be good for Jack Miller. Um, it'd be good to see Zarko on the Honda. Should be a good weekend. All right.
got a contract to, to work there. Ah, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 uh, that's right, Brett. <laughs> Wanted in a lot of places, that bloke. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no surprise, really. <laughs>